The Honourable Dr Brian Walker. Thank you, Acting President. Members will be very pleased to know that my speaking will be here very much a uh, matter of a few minutes. Because at, at the risk of stating the obvious, we in the Legalised Cannabis Party, WA, we're, we're not in government. Uh, mind you, if things were, things might be a lot different, more sedate in the chamber, maybe an extra day or two in consulting. Maybe things aren't so difficult, uh, so different after all. But we're not in government. And uh, it's also need to be said that this is not actually a, a matter of discussing uh, about the different budget choices, but, uh, but adding additional $1.5 billion to the budget as an emergency as a, an advance authorization bill. And it is for the government, I think, of the day to set its priorities. And the government will uh, question and uh, put to good use, according to their own um, um, uh, information, how best to use the, uh, the, the finances. And um, we, on our part, need to hold you to account. And we shall do that. Um, that, is, that is our reason, I think, for being here. What we shouldn't do is block the government's access to the funds it needs in the first instance. This is not, I think, the purpose of being in opposition. It's not uh, the purpose of being on the crossbench, but to holding to account and assessing how things are being spent is really what we are uh, supposed to be doing. Now, I, I would like to think that we are seen here in the crossbench, uh, certainly in my own party, as being responsible members of this uh, uh, chamber. So as a result, I will do no more than, than uh, give notice to the government, as I did last year, uh, that we uh, as a party, and myself in particular, uh, we will hold them to account for the additional $1.5 billion that they intend to, to uh, spend. Uh, but we have to be under no illusions at all that this figure is actually so large, 1.5 billion, most of us, myself included, can't actually write that number out properly because it's beyond our, our understanding. Uh, so the question of spending such a large amount actually boggles the mind. Um, so we're not going to stand in the way of this uh, Treasury's Advance Authorization Bill 2022, which has our support. However, when it comes to budgetary recommendations, I'm not going to go into nearly the detail that the two speakers before me have, have gone into. Um, the issuing of funds of this high number doesn't actually mean that the monies are being well spent. People have the understanding that if a large sum of money is being devoted, it must actually be well spent and be very well needed. Um, and so the degree or, or to which we see this uh, money being spent, this large amount, tends to influence us in thinking this must be money well spent. And President, Acting President, this is just not so. I, I do recall uh, looking at the Southern Inland Health Initiative, SIHI, at work in the wheat belt. Now, I use the word at work advisedly uh, because when I observed that, about half the funds that was uh, allocated to the improvements in the, the health service didn't actually go to the health service. They went actually to the advisors who'd come up regularly by plane, a group of people uh, again and again and again. To, to assess the building. They looked like junkets to me personally. And they ended up by doing things like placing a, a, a door, a, a separation with a door, smack across the middle of the, of the fluorescent light, which now couldn't be changed anymore. I do recall them deciding, actively deciding, to place an emergency uh, alarm system out of reach of the person needing the alarm system. And then placing doors in such a way that when you were actually being confronted by the putative knife-wielding uh, uh, aggressor in the, the, the clinic, you couldn't actually open the door because it came inwards. There's no way of ex exiting the, the room quickly outwards. And we spent good money on people coming to advise us on that. And it was certainly wasn't money well spent because of the catastrophe uh, of, of planning. In fact, they had taken a building plan for elsewhere and just dumped the same building onto our area which didn't meet the needs there either. So uh, I wouldn't call that a successful and efficient use of the money. The money was certainly uh, successfully and efficiently disbursed, but I, I doubt it was actually well used. The same might also be said of the money spent uh, on the much needed mental health services. Now, uh, much has been made of the amounts of money, large amounts of money which have been spent on, on mental health services. Uh, the staff are clamouring for innovation. Just, I think, yesterday in my clinic, I was listening to someone who actually works in the area and saying of people who are resigning, one woman had come over from over east and spent six months here before saying, I can't take this anymore. The system that you have here is so backwards, so primitive compared to what's happening in the east that I feel myself just uh, encumbered, unable to do the job I'm paid for. The patients are not being well served. And uh, before I go mentally ill, I'm going to leave and go back to a place where the services 
while not perfect, are certainly better than they are here. And this, I think, this allocation of funds, which uh, are much needed, but spent in a way which matters, which is actually efficiently done, is a matter for which the government bodies will be asking for account. And I will also, in that respect, be holding the government to account. But nevertheless, having listened to the minister in the course of the second reading speech and taking into account the pandemic, and all its ramifications, I am convinced that the government is justified in making the request it has made of us, and on that basis, that bill has my support.